Hey guys, Sullivan Owen here in Philadelphia. I thought that I would check in and we could do a quick seed starting update just to see how all the seeds I've started are going. They are mostly in my sun bubble. And then um, some are out in the landscape and then I didn't do a ton of bulb planting this past fall because our beds are way in progress. But there are some moments that are really pretty. So I thought we could look around and see the tulips that some are about to fade and some are just kind of coming into their prime. So let's pop into the sun bubble and I'll put the product name down below because I get a lot of questions about it. It has been super helpful, but let's pop inside and we'll look at some of the seed starts and then we'll kind of do a quick run around. Not really ready to do a renovation update. I'm hoping, I'm trying to rush through this so that we, it's supposed to rain. Again, we've been having tons of April showers. So fingers crossed, I will get to make some beds where there will be Mayflowers. So let's pop into the bubble and look and see how everything's doing in there. And then we'll go visit some of the seedlings and some of the bulbs around the yard. Okay, so the, um, the bubble is very full. Not everything in here was started from seed. I have had a bunch of my mail order plants show up. I think we'll look at those in the next renovation video. But um, the majority of this shelf, with the exception of the Proven Winners cans, is seed started. So it's a lot of scabiosas, um, a few Rudbeckia, lots of foxgloves. I had like fantastic germination with the foxgloves I did this year. So I'll put up, a, I only did a few kinds and they are going wild. Um, this area over here is sort of the um, the recovery area. I started some flocks, which last year I direct sowed. I started some early in like some nursery pots and then things got, it got really cold and rainy here. And I just, I didn't want to put things out, but the bubble <laughs> was getting full. So I put some um, things that had been ready to harden off outside on our back porch which we can go look at and um i've been covering them on the really cold nights it does look like we have finally it's like the last week of april first week of may and um it does look like we've finally gotten past like the 30s at night we haven't had a frost but it's gotten to be like 36 37 degrees so everything that i started with the intention of planting out like the first couple of weeks of april um, with like saving really only truly hot weather stuff till like the first week of May, everything is, is piling up and combined with, you know, the rain has made it really difficult to get compost and cardboard laid out to like put out the beds. So everything really is just like stacking up everywhere. It feels like, I truly feel like a nursery man this year. Um, I have baby plants just getting leggy and wanting desperately to be planted. Like they really want to go outside. Um, my seed starting mix that I did this year has had like major mildew issues. I have tried a few, um, I tried like an organic disinfectant to try and like stave it off. Um, I'm obviously when we can get sun trying to use the sun to disinfect to kind of kill the mildew, but I have had some like serious damping off issues, specifically in some of the tomatoes and in almost all my cucumbers. Um, so I may have to, I really, I do love cucumbers. I only got one really viable looking plant, so I may have to buy a few cucumber starts. But um, everything else, I'm just kind of keeping things watered. I'm bumping up pots when I can, but um, I do tend to plant things pretty close together. So sometimes I'll take multiple like starts and kind of put them into more of a nursery can size. And um, it gets, it's getting warm in here. It looks like the sun might come out though. It's supposed to pour this afternoon. And 
the bubble does heat up. It gets it gets warm in here. Um, so I have an oscillating fan that I bring in that kind of circulates air around everything. And then the majority of these pots are dahlias. And I just have them in peat right now. That's not my preferred method of starting anything. Um, peat moss, if you sphagnum peat, um, I'm trying to use it less just because the more I learn about the process of harvesting it, it just doesn't really seem like it's a, it's a product that I sh we should be relying on so much. So um, I'm working on phasing that out, but um, due to, uh, I'm in Philadelphia, we are still having some challenges around getting things that we need. And I was waiting for a potting mix to come. So I do have dahlias coming up and I will be potting those tubers, like, uh, recycling the peat working it into a few areas that could use a little help with drainage and acidity and then um, starting to get the dahlias that I'm growing on because with this much rain and this much chill I'm probably not going to be putting the dahlias out until we're like solidly into May. So um, the ones that are sprouting, as they sprout, I will put them into potting mix, not too much, keep them in these same size cans and keep growing them on. So I guess those are sort of seedlings. They're like my dahlia starts. So you can see these are ornamental, the peppers that I was growing as ornamentals. They're like a, a tiny orange kumquat and black indigo rose cherry and they're just they look the seedlings are sad they want to be planted out so badly but it has it's been really really cold germination on my squash was insane i don't even remember planting <laughs> this many seeds um i've been trimming things back because uh, honestly everything is just like ready to go staying in the bubble but it's been just too cold for everything uh this is my lizzie anthus it's still having damping off issues, um, but some of them look good. It's hard to keep them at the right temperature. They, it gets a, it probably gets like a shade too hot in here on very sunny days, but it's too cold outside for them. So um, I can't say I'm really <laughs> interested in trying these again. Um, this is a bunch of Nicotiana. I always have good success with it. Um, so. Uh, these are straw flowers. I've got some planted out. The hyacinth bean, it has been a little too cold. Um, this is black-eyed Susan vine. Um, this is, I have, this is a bunch of random poppy seeds. I tried multi-sowing them and really struggled to keep moisture in the seed starting mix, but those all looked good. So I kind of peeled them out of the multi-sow and pop them in there and they're happy so <clears throat> uh, lots of foxgloves back here some grasses more foxgloves uh i'm very excited i love penstemon and this mystica uh penstemon worked really well back there that little train wreck <laughs> of basil. I just started it too early and it's just, it, basil is so easy to grow. I'm not that bothered with it. Um, I, my fennel looks good. These Amsonia were um, mail order roots. This gamma grass is from seed. It's pretty happy. But I would just say that my like my seed starting mix, which was from Jiffy brand, it wasn't my first choice, but I struggled to round up as much as I needed and Home Depot had it. So some of it is mildewy. Some of it struggles to stay, stay moist and the plants really show it. Okay, I think I'm talking too much. We're not gonna get to see everything because it really is about to pour. So my raised bed planters are from Veridec and they are Court and steel, so they rust. Uh, I personally love the rusty finish. These are getting a little splashback from mud, but I think at some point we'll have grass around here. 
and they are four by four, so 16 square feet each, so 32 square feet of growing space. Um, this is a heirloom slicer tomato, a couple of cherries. Um, I don't know if these are gonna make it. <laughs> I tried, they're buried very deep, so maybe they'll put on some, um, and this is, a, this is aroma. So, haven't had great luck with tomatoes in last year, but they were also growing in a place that they probably didn't get enough sun. Let me put my hood up. It's starting to rain. Uh, I multi-sewed lettuce, so I just kind of pulled it out of the tray in clumps, and then I will sprinkle additional seed. We mostly eat leaf lettuce rather than heads of lettuce. Uh, this is what I mean when I say I'm multi so I just kind of fill a tray and take the little seedlings and then just kind of I highly recommend Charles Dowding for vegetable multi so techniques um, he is a garden educator out of England and he has a great YouTube um, Belp in this bed Hi, it's kind of a little bit random. Um, we have kale for leaf. I've, we've been eating that already. It started growing like crazy under the lights. Um, this is a lunchbox, like a small bell pepper. There's six of them. These are pea shoots um, for snow peas and, and pea shoot eating. Um, not as much of a, a, like a garden pea fan, but we love pea pods, snow peas. Um, four squash plants, that's a spaghetti, a winter spaghetti squash that should be more than enough for the two of us. This is my one lone <laughs> cucumber plant, and this one is struggling. Uh, I, I filled the beds with raised bed mix, a little bit of compost at the bottom, and Espoma Garden Tone, and that is what I incorporated into the mid-layer and then planted in and when I um, was planting I could kind of see everything was mixing together and then uh, I read the garden tone bag <laughs> which is always helpful and I will top dress it suggests um, to add another dose after your transplants are about 10 days old so letting everything kind of settle in here and then come back through and incorporate a little bit more and what i'll probably do is just kind of scratch it between the rows and let the plants kind of just at this point they just need to grow on and if we are at getting any cold snaps i have row covers that i can just kind of throw over these so let's talk about the orange rope in the next next week's video which will be a garden renovation update but these are black hero and black parrot tulips interplanted with decaying anemones which this combo is really cool The landscapers, we had our grading work done. They accidentally ran over this little area, but <laughs> so there's a teeny tiny anemone that uh, is an inch tall. But I love this combo. I especially love this black parrot, which I gotta say up until this past week, I wasn't sure anything was gonna happen with these. These are further from the house they are there's normally there's going to be a fence here but they're right next to the street and so my thinking is they are the tall are, tend to be a later a later blooming variety of tulip but i also think the soil over here took longer to warm up like the the bulbs that are closer to the house and closer to hardscaping and things that kind of hold heat seem to have been doing well. But I'm not gonna complain. I'm really happy to have something pretty to look at because everything else is a mud pit. Well, it doesn't look muddy now, but look at those boots. So yeah, I'm really proud of the anemones. They were a little bit of a struggle and I think I'll do a video on them next 
fall um, but it's nice to see them and then unfortunately everything inside this rope band is going to have to get pulled so that's partially why I wanted to document it but I'm going to let everything flower before we have to pull it out. All right, so these are my front entry planters and the bulbs up here are a little bit random. The squirrels dug in these planters quite a bit and so everything's kind of like all over the place. But this is like a Belle Epoque tulip. These are from like a mix. I ordered many types of mixes for bulbs because I just didn't know what I would like. This daffodil, I believe, I thought it was going to have more of this like peachy color. Oh, some sun. The ranunculus, the verbascum, those I bought right before the shutdown. So um, it's been nice to keep these full. So I'm going to let these bulbs just kind of be pretty for another few weeks because it's not quite warm enough to change over the plants in these. But you can see like this one looks jammed full. This one, the squirrels ate, they ate the Belle Epoque because that never came up. There's a couple purples and then everything is kind of shoved that way. And then like, you know, this, I don't, what, what is that going to be? And I can't take credit growing these from bulb or seed, but the ranunculus are really pretty. And I am planting a round of ranunculus for summer. So if you watch my seed starting video, I started, <laughs> I want to say like 11, 10 kinds of sweet pea. Um, they, these are looking a little yellow, but actually already I can see they were super, super distressed when I finally got them planted. But and um and they are being trained up this very cool gothic arch window frame that my husband found at an antique mall in north carolina so this is kind of what they were looking like but they're already greening up they've been treated with some biotone and some good compost and they should start to recover they were in their containers just a shade too long and that's really because it just got so cold that uh, they just, I couldn't plant them out yet. It was just too cold for them. At the front door here are the Larkspur. Nothing really happening with them, but they have grown a little bit. And um, more anemones. The ones in the containers seem a little bit leggier more pansies I definitely start so my nasturtiums were really struggling and as soon as I potted them up and got them outside they were really happy so I think next year I will just direct sow them outside this pansy group is very pretty I'll just put up the list of the varieties um, I grew so many different ones that I could not possibly tell you which is which and there isn't one that I would get rid of. So probably just keep that seed supply in rotation. This is more of a blue, purple, white mix. Teeny tiny anemone. Trying straw flowers in containers. More nasturtiums definitely getting happy. Even these little guys that were struggling in their cells look like much more happy out here same similar for this bed i did some weeding and just popped some seedlings in so i popped these in maybe three weeks ago when it was warm <laughs> and it got really really cold so this is zebrina hollyhock one of my favorites um some more straw flowers back there Queen Anne's Lace and Scabiosas, more Hollyhocks, some of that Phlox. I just don't think it's like warm enough yet for anything. So I guess the lesson I'm learning this year is, you know, don't start too early. Um, more Larkspur. I'm kind of trying a mix of uh, Larkspur in a few areas to kind of see where, where it, it works for me. 
these are technically from seed but they're from last year <laughs> so it was nice to see them come up tucked some larkspur under there little snapdragons definitely put these out early so i'm happy they survived um, they're finally looking like it's getting warm enough to make them happy. So here's the other group of bulbs. This was, um, a mix and these are definitely like heading past their prime. Um, but so pretty. This one had three heads. I don't know if the squirrels helped that along. These are like, they're like peonies. They're just so pretty. So I just ordered from um, Eden Brothers and uh, just got some of their assorted mixes. So really happy with some of the colors. So I did just order a few more. I popped some more sweet peas in this planter to kind of climb up the wisteria. And then these two pots are full of a species sweet pea, so a little bit shorter, different, pretty foliage. And um, it should be like a cool blue, which I think as this transitions to wisteria will be really pretty. Oh, it's starting to rain. All right, and then the last area is the back porch, which um, is quite cluttered and crowded where uh, we did get the yard graded. There's grass seed everywhere, so we can't put anything on the grass. But um, mint, dianthus, a lot of this stuff really does need to get planted now that the weather's settling down. Lots and lots of hollyhocks, more Queen Anne's lace, more pansies. I probably overdid it on the pansies. More larkspur, more pansies. All right, it's sunny but raining, so I'm gonna wrap this up, but I hope you guys enjoyed seeing how some of my seeds are doing. Um, I'm definitely making a lot of notes. I'm going to really think about my calendar for next year and just kind of like hope that we don't get too much cold weather, hope that we start to get some sun because it basically has rained. It's, we've had like two sunny days in the last couple weeks and it's supposed to start pouring again later today though the sun is deceptive but um yeah thank you guys so much for watching i will be back soon with a garden renovation update to show you kind of the other stuff um i'm just it's been slow going it's been a little hard to make progress with the rain and the mud and trying not to ruin the new grass seed <laughs> just which maybe the rain already did so i will see you guys soon thank you so much for watching if you're new here thanks for subscribing and i will see you guys soon